So we are talking about fiber. And if you've been following our blog at onyoureading.com, is it backslash or forward slash? <laughs> you go through this every time. Forward slash. Forward slash blog. But just go to onyoureading.com and click on the blog drop down. Yep. We've been really diving into quality foods lately. Yeah, in the last couple weeks. I think. And if you go back, it kind of starts with my story of how I went from eating only cinnamon toast crunch to realizing I need more fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. to different ways of quantifying quality from our 80-20 method mm -hmm. to the 800 gram challenge to diving into fiber. Yeah, well we're actually starting with fiber first, but yeah. Well, right. We're I, gonna dive in deeper into those other I, components. I knew that, I was just simply, <laughs> because fiber is the topic But today. that's exactly right, yeah. I think the story that you, um, that you laid out there for everyone of your experience of not eating quite so well and not pooping and not pooping um, then led you to kind of try to come up with this way in which you can quantify the quality of your food without it being crazy I think and I think that these three elements to look at are really good ways in which to keep your quality in check so I want to break down fiber into three parts right now let me know if you agree with this just basically what fiber is all right uh, what net carbs are. All right, we could... Just quickly, you know, <laughs> this is an overview. If you want to learn even more, you've been killing the blog posts, so much detail, so much information. And then finally, why we still track fiber. Okay. Which kind of... I feel like I'm in the hot seat. You, well, you are because you're smarter. So, <laughs> what's fiber? Fiber is a carbohydrate. That's simply what it is. Just mm -hmm. like sugar... It's just a form of carbohydrate. Right. It just happens to be a harder to break down carbohydrate. Yeah. And there's two types of fiber. There's soluble fiber and there's insoluble fiber. Um, and the soluble fiber does actually partially get broken down, I would say. It, but not in the same way that uh, other carbohydrates do. So not in the same. It doesn't get broken down into sugars like other carbohydrates. It actually gets processed in the colon and it gets basically fermented into short chain fatty acids. So it does wind up becoming used for energy. So it does contribute to calories, but it's thought that it doesn't contribute as many calories and also in a different way. So I know I'm getting complicated already. Read more about fiber yeah. on our blog. Yeah, read about it. But basically <laughs> it's a carbohydrate, takes a little longer to get broken down. It does get broken down to be used as some energy. Soluble fiber, yes. It slows down digestion. It mm -hmm. leaves you feeling satiated longer. Yeah. And it typically comes from better quality foods. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to find it in plants, um, seeds, those kinds of things, the skins of fruits. Um, yeah. And then insoluble fiber, just to clarify, does not get broken down. And we'll dive more into that. Do we have a recommended number that people should be striving for? So I think the actual current um, daily recommended value is 28 grams for adults. I kind of like, because we do macros and we track, so that's just a very generic guideline for people. And you can go and look at the USDA guidelines online and figure out for the amount of calories you're consuming, your age, and uh, whether you're female or male, how much you should be having according to their recommendations. Um, but I think a good guideline for people is somewhere between 15 to 20% of your carbohydrates. I think that's a good goal to strive for. Okay, at. that's a great goal. I've, I've often told people that, you have a hair on your face, that... Did you get that I on video? It, that 1% of their overall caloric number. Oh, okay. So, yeah. in, so you, know, you have way. a 2,000 calorie diet, you should be getting at least 20 grams of fiber. Yeah. And, and might, I, so, might be on a little low end. Yeah, I think that's a little low. So I think if you're hitting 15% of your carbohydrates, and I like to take the carbohydrates because it is a carbohydrate, and it, you know, so that's where you're getting it from. Um, if you, yeah, if you strive to hit 15%, that should be taking care of that uh, daily recommended value. That's going to be a very high correlation to what I just said, actually, because if you think about it, if someone's on a 2,000 calorie diet with our formula oftentimes they have 
200 grams of carbs. Mm -hmm. So it'd be about 30 grams of fiber. So okay. not too far off. Right. So close, close to it. Okay. That's what fiber in a nutshell is. Yeah. Now, net carbs is where food labels subtract the grams of fiber from the overall grams of carbs in the food. Correct. So the, the big culprit out there that we see are Quest bars. Yeah, a lot of protein bars, but I think probably Quest bars were like the first protein bars out there to really kind of slap it all over the front of their packaging. Do you believe it's more of a marketing ploy? Um, you know, it's, it's somewhat controversial because I, I kind of understand where they're coming from, but at the same time, the, there is so much scientific research out there that supports one view, some that supports another as to the exact impact of fiber and then sugar alcohols on the body. And there's no saying what an, any individual's response really is to that as well. So for them to make claims that you can subtract the dietary fiber if you're counting or, or, or to make it a low carb protein bar, I don't think it's it is a marketing ploy. Well, and, and that's really the point of this. Like, we didn't want to d dive crazy deep into fiber because if you want to read more about it, we have it all out there. It's more the conversation because we're going to get people that read that. And hey, we're telling you, some of this truly does not get digested. It literally buzzes through your body. No calories come from it. No energies come from it. That's insoluble fiber. Right. And the way you've put it is, think about if you put something to sit in water will it turn to mush or not? Right. If it still looks the exact same three days later, it's insoluble. Mm -hmm. If it turns to mush in time, it's soluble, meaning inside your body it would get broken down by digestive enzymes. Yeah, so when we think of soluble fiber in foods, we're, we're thinking about things like blueberries, oatmeal, um, some other grains. I can't think off the top of my head now. Banana as well. Broccoli. Yeah, broccoli, broccoli would have both, I think. Well, um, and that's, that's the other That's thing. the whole point. <laughs> so there's soluble and insoluble. And like Roz has already stated, insoluble truly doesn't get used. Well, then why the hell am I counting it towards my carbs? That sounds like more food I could be eating. If I'm eating an insoluble fiber, well, hell, I can have more cinnamon toast crunch. And there's, there's several elements here that we're kind of brushing over. And one is that most foods contain several, like both types of fiber. They might be richer in one than the other, um, but they contain both, both uh, types of fiber. And there's no distinguishing what quantity there is. There's some suggestion that most foods typically contain more insoluble fiber than soluble fiber, but there's no, you look at the back of your nutrition label, it just says dietary fiber. It doesn't tell you which type. Right, so we can use that Quest bar as an example again, and I don't know. But, and then this is my second point. That's different. So I'm, you can think about fiber as naturally occurring fiber, so this, so in whole foods, and then you can think of fiber that's in Quest bars, and that's synthetic fiber, and that typically is fiber that they're looking to put in types of fiber that is basically treated the same way as insoluble fiber. Um, but like I said, there's not really, the research is still out there as to what kind of an impact that is having. And some of the types of fiber that are in those bars, there's research that says, okay, actually 50% of that, that dietary fiber does contribute towards your calories. Then there's some types that say, and research says, okay, 10% of their value contributes. So basically, it's pretty wishy-washy. <laughs> right. Well, it starts to get really complicated. Kind of what I was saying, and again, using that Quest bar just for an example, say there's 27 grams of carbs in it. Right. I think the Quest bar says like four grams net carbs, which is right. implying 23 of the 27... Is fiber. Is fiber, period. Right. But what you're saying is great, but we don't know of those 23 grams how much you're actually using and how much you're not. Correct. So, and that would hold true across any food. Mm -hmm. You know, I spoke to an RD about this, our friend Laura, and she's like, you know, the only thing I can tell you that would be 100% insoluble would be as if you were eating grass. <laughs> and I don't think many people are doing that. Right. So it becomes this gray area. And then she even suggested you can dive into a deeper rabbit hole of, 
you know, everyone's body is a little bit different and how you break down any given food will be different of how much you use versus how much you don't use. Mm -hmm. Things like corn and beans. Mm -hmm. You know, some people digest it better than others. Correct. And that's down to the types of enzymes that you have in your gut and uh, in your colon. So... Which means and bacteria know, and we should all be getting tested for all sorts of things like that. Right. But at the same time, the reason if you've read our blog posts or you are stumbling upon this or found anything about fiber in the past and you're like, this doesn't make sense, why am I tracking it? That's why, because there's no guarantee of how much or how little we are and aren't digesting. Correct. So the simplest way really is be consistent. I would, you know, personally, and this is what we do, we track fiber, right? We, we count it towards our carbs. We yeah, just count it. Right, yeah. we count it. We track it. We I wouldn't say we it. count fiber. We just track our carbs. Right. And at the end of the day or throughout the day, we look at our fiber. Correct. We're not tracking our fiber for any other reason to subtract. It's no different than sugar. We try not to get too much sugar, but at the same time, we keep our carbs in check. Right. And, th and, that, and that really, I think, is the simplest way of doing it and the most consistent you know we look to try to meet our daily needs for fiber every day and that helps to keep the quality of our food in check it helps to keep our bowel movements nice and regular and overall that just keeps us healthy absolutely so that's our talk on fiber do you, yeah. do you have anything else you wanted to add to that no, I feel like that was a lot of information for everyone. I think it was, but I think it was broken down simply. <laughs> I didn't mean any pun there, but at the same time, you know, we look to fiber. Don't get so worked up about it. No different than we tell people to track everything they eat as far as fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. It's just as important that they make sure they're keeping track of their fiber. Absolutely. All right. So 